We are back with another BBB Champions League special supported by Pepsi Max and I'm joined by the legend Emma Byrne. How are we? Really good. Yeah. Delighted to be back here. Delighted <laughs> to be talking about these games and the next games that are coming up. Well, the, the, the four teams that go through to the semi-final is Lyon will face PSG and Chelsea will face Barcelona. So they're tasty semi-final uh, lineups and I'm really looking forward to them. Certainly Chelsea-Barcelona at Stamford Bridge. So let's just talk a little bit about that game. Obviously, for, for me, Barcelona play Barcelona way and, and they're never really going to change that style of play. What do Chelsea have to do differently in, in this fixture in order to go one step further and get to the Champions League final this year? Well... I think this is the year that they have the best chance to do it, to mm -hmm. be honest, just with the two teams, how they're they're coming into the game. I think Chelsea will look back at their previous games they played against Barca and, you know, the 1-1 one, one draw over in Barcelona, I think is a great game for them to focus on. Um, they did sit back, they were quite compact, but to be quite honest, it's the, the wide play from Barca that they need to be careful mm. about and also the wide play that Chelsea need to get better at. Yeah. So that's definitely going to be, I think, the theme of the game. Barca like to play central to play out. So Chelsea need to decide whether they're going to try and stop that ball into the middle, into mm. the Kira Walsh, into the Cajaro. And if they can't stop that, then they need to be very good out in the wide areas. Mm. And every time Chelsea have played Barca, they've been... Destroyed. Dominated in wide areas. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm really looking forward to the matchup between um, Charles and Hansen because obviously we saw the final well, a few years ago now, wasn't it? And Chelsea. 2019, got battered, they were battered destroyed four nil, in the wide areas. And it, yeah, and really early on, really early on in yeah, that game. It was Jess Carter in 2019. And, and she was just not quick enough. Yeah. Charles is quick enough. But she, she, wasn't she was good naive enough, enough last year. wasn't she? Yeah, yeah she, she was wasn't naive. Good this year she's better. Yeah. I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, I don't think Hansen is going to get as much joy as she's got before, but she's still, you still have to double up out there. You're going to have to get your centre halves out to help your, your full backs. So, so you mentioned, so, so out of possession, obviously, you know, Chelsea, I think Chelsea are better now than they've been in previous years of actually playing without the ball. I, don't, I used to think they struggled when they didn't have yeah. the ball to, to, to stay in games. I actually think they've really improved that and their transition has improved. But, but in possession, how important is it and who are the key players for Chelsea when they have the ball? And what style do you, you know, expect Emma Hayes, I know she's a friend of yours, to adopt in, in these two games? They play Barca alone first, uh, sorry, away in the first leg. I actually think that plays a little bit in their favour. Mm -hmm. But they're yet to beat Barcelona in any of the fixtures they've played against them. Yeah, I mean, Does that play on your mind as a player? Not really, because nobody's beaten Barcelona. So I'd be but like, any, oh, we're the closest ones. But, so. but in any of the legs, I mean, so they they get a draw last year away, don't they? But I'm saying in, in any of the, the legs or in the final, they're, they're yet to beat Barcelona. Do you know what? It, it wouldn't bother me because I'd be looking at Barca this season and I'd be like, we can beat them. Mm. Just because they've got weaknesses, whereas they don't didn't have any weaknesses before. Yeah. They're also in a team that's... You know, they're a little bit disgruntled. Be their their managers leaving, leaving, like Chelsea. Yeah. Um, they've a couple of players who feel they could be playing. That's maybe upsetting a little bit in the dressing room. Mm. You know, I think Mappy Leon being out is a huge, huge right. loss, a double whammy because not only is she, for me, the best defender in the world, you've got Engen, who's a makeshift centre back, who who I think is struggling a yeah. little bit. Um, I think she's fine no with the ball. She's fine her. with the ball. It's just without the ball. I exactly. felt like her positioning. Exactly. She gets too involved and wants to step in too much. And it's a as you mentioned, it, it, it can be punished. Also, you've got fullbacks who are extremely good getting forward. It just depends on whether Chelsea want to play that way. Yeah. Let them bring them on, bring them on and then counter, yeah. which they've been. Very, very, and good that's at. what I think. I that, that's what I was going to say because I think you, you know those transition moments. I feel like if Chelsea are to beat this Barcelona team, it will be in their moments that they win the game. In yeah. those transitions, they have to be compact. They have to be, you know, in, in terms of distances between the lines. Don't allow Barca players to get in between them. Yeah, and then hurt them on the transit. But it's got to be fast. It's got I to think, be done with speed. Oh, there's so much to go. Or do you, you go know, toe to toe? Do you think Emma, do you think going toe to toe with a Barcelona team? Yeah. No, you know, is there a team good enough to do so that? They're so good in one v one situations. I don't think they should go player player, but they have to be very careful. Chelsea have to be excellent yeah, out of both. possession, and if you're going to play James and Nuskin, the problem is Barca will find those balls into those central areas, yeah. um, because James, she's so good, she's world class, but she does struggle 
with the other side of the game, mm-hmm. which, yeah, defensively. Yeah. So that's a problem. If they're going to play counter-attack and style football um, and get, and if they can get James on the ball, brilliant. I don't think they'll be able to do that. I think Barca are going to cut that out. The I think they're going to going press in, yeah. high. I think they're going to push their defenders high. So it's about that ball in behind just a couple of times just to try and stretch it, as I said. Do they have a player that can run in behind? If they're going to play Nuskin, will they have it with Ramirez? So what, who do they Combination play? Combination do they play, yeah. Um, there are weaknesses at Barca, definitely. Mm. Emma Hayes has said to me, she knows how to beat them. Yeah. Now, now it's about execution. And, I, I look, and, and I, we all trust that Emma definitely can come up with game plans to beat them. As I said, they're yet to do it, but it, it's a game that I really look forward to. And obviously I do believe Chelsea are getting closer to being better in Europe and, and you know even yeah, but maybe going on to win I it agree. but Barca as you say are, are I agree, a team that are difficult but Barca you don't want to I think it should be played down because yeah, you but, don't want to upset Barca <laughs> and the players they're so they're so competitive yeah they are like even the build up I can feel like they're like okay the, you know you got close we're going to punish you for even getting close to us yeah. in that season. So you just you just don't know. You don't know. And obviously coming. Chelsea are on for the quadruple. They have a final coming up at the weekend, and then they've obviously got that home and away fixture in the semi final. They're they're sitting top of the league in WSL, and they're in the semi final of the FA Cup. So yeah, it's a big season for Emma Hayes and the Chelsea team. But Lyon PSG, you know, an all French semi final there. How do you see that game playing out? For, for me, over the yeah, over the it. quarter fight, it, it's a difficult one to call. But I just, in my opinion, think Leon have just that little bit more. Than I, what I PSG agree with do. you. I agree. And you know, looking at the results, previous results, it's always been very, very tight. They nearly cancel each other out. I think it's about the team that's going to go right. I'm going to play my way, yeah. and I'm going to. We're going to go out, and we're going to be on the front foot. Every time I've watched them play each other. They're very apprehensive of each other and it's a bit of a, you know, it's, it's it, as I said, it's a bit of a dead game when they play each other. And I think that it's going to be the team that's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck. And I think that will be Leon. Yeah. They have that little bit that, you know, they, they want it so bad. I think their players again are hitting the right form. And I think, you know, I think that front line is just absolutely. Oh, it's, it's good. It's sick. It's good. And they're not being spoken about. You know, everyone's talking this year about Chelsea and Barcelona and, you know, no one's really mentioned Lyon and, you know, they've won the Champions League They're the most amount of times. And and I think they've been they've been really good. But, you know, over these two fixtures, Lyon have beat PSG 12 times. They've drawn three times and PSG have only won three out of those. So yeah. it'll be a difficult one for PSG. But again, another semi-final. I think both of these semi-finals will be difficult to call. Um, but there could be a potential final. I'm going to put it out there between Lyon and Chelsea. And obviously, there, it's been rumoured that the Lyon manager, um, yeah. Van Pasta, she might yeah. be taking over the Chelsea job at the end of the season. So that would be an interesting final if that is to happen. But that pretty much rounds up our quarterfinal and, you know, really looking forward to the semi-finals.